Hello. <gasps> I haven't got lights on. <gasps> He's all ready. He's not ready though, is he? He hasn't even put the lights on. Oh, got home, there hasn't been traffic. Everything's going well. At least my microphone's on, right? You have to see my big belly when turning on all the lights. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me for this bizarre Wednesday afternoon. It's time for some, as requested, Makata, which I talked about in my top 10 of A. Rosenberg games that I did a couple of weeks ago now. And uh, this was requested off the back of that to do a solo playthrough for it. I did a playthrough for it a few years ago now. I believe it was requested then as well. And that was a two-player one. And so solo has now been requested. It's largely the same if you have seen that video, but... Uh, there are there are a couple of things missing. There are we're essentially this is the world over here, or the world as it was known, and we are going to be traveling around the world. This is us here, this little wooden cylinder. We're going to be traveling around the world, picking up goods, gaining time, spending time, and making goods appear elsewhere in the world as well. And we will be trying to satisfy contracts with those goods to earn more contracts, which can be sold for money and so on and so on. In the multiplayer game, there's there's an element of following. Somebody on their turn decides to go somewhere, does all of their business, and then they can be followed as well by spending time tokens, and you can get you know a bit of something going on on their turn as well. Obviously, in the solo game, you're not following anyone. You're here by yourself. But instead of all of that, there is a lot more kind of pressure. There's a lot more, <laughs> there's a lot more of a time constraint on you. You have 17 turns in this game. This is the solo deck. Once per turn, this is going to have a card taken from it, which is going to add to the contracts that we can take. But it's also a timer for the game. There is, uh, there's no going back once <laughs> we have started. So, wow, I should take a breath sometimes. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Hi, Mikael. Hi, Michael. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Steve. Thank you very much for joining me. I have had... A practice at this where I scored, I think sixty something. I should remember it was only last night. Uh, it says to be an, to be an uber makata, you need to score eighty, I believe. So that's that's the aim of the game for this. Hi Joel, how's it all looking? I, I assume you can hear me <laughs> because somebody at some point would have said uh, that they couldn't. Is it all is it all looking okay? Can you see it well enough? I should get my big, uh, my big output thing there. Is it a little bit dark? Should we get it brightened up a little bit? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put it, put it up just a smidgen there. Is that nice? Looking good. Good. Okie doke. Right. So, what do we have at the start of the game? We've got some contracts. If I uh, have, I have not called the buttons proper things. Uh, we've got things available up here. We've got some bonus cards we can get. When we go to those locations, we can get some bonus cubes. Uh, you don't have to worry about this bit at the bottom. This is if you follow someone there. We're not going to be doing that in the solo game. These are buildings that we can construct for money, sometimes a lot of money. They will be a big source of points. Uh, for the end of the game as well, that wants to do things to earn those points. You don't just get them. Although there, there are, there is at least one building in there that you buy, and it's just worth points. Looking good, good. Thank you. And we can see, yeah, there's the start of the board. Uh, we see this is our our storeroom basically. This is where all of the goods are going to be kept. We start the game off with contracts of value two, three, four, and five. Those are the levels of the contracts, kind of as 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 they get higher and higher, they get harder to fulfill. People want more and more things. The contracts themselves are worth money. You can sell your contracts at the start of your turn. That's, in fact, the, the first thing, the invest phase. You can buy buildings and bonus cards. The way to earn money in the game is to sell your contracts. When you fulfill contracts, you will earn new contracts, but you will keep these ones. So it's all about you know, trying to figure out a nice efficiency path. Yes, it is. Uh, a really good efficiency simulator is you, you've got these 17 turns and uh, you'll quickly find out that goods in places where you want them can be very, very scarce. So you've got to find ways of uh, of manipulating the, the world, essentially, manipulating the cubes everywhere to try and get them where you need them. So 
So looking at what I've started with, I've also got two bonus buildings here. So if I go to England, I can get a couple of wine. If I go to Italy, I can get a couple of coal. Uh, so the thing is, a, a restriction in the solo game is that you can't get coins. So in a normal game, you have a limit of five contracts until the very end. Uh, so if you start your turn with more than five contracts, in a multiplayer game, you can buy something that you want. You can get change. But if there's nothing that you particularly want right now, or you're saving up for something, you can get the money that you're selling your contracts for in coins. In a solo game, there are no coins. You need to um, you need to just buy something, uh, and possibly uh, are forced to because you know the it's uh, it, it comes to the crunch. You might need to sell contracts you didn't quite want to get rid of just yet, so you can afford the really good thing there, rather than just wasting your money on something that's not worthwhile or even just losing that money because you can't keep that contract so what do we need we, we can go to russia and give up a livestock to fulfill their contract we've drawn two for spain which is quite nice so we can go there on a turn and you can fulfill as many contracts as you like and if you gain if i gained a new contract for spain and happened to have the cubes on it i could fulfill that in one go right at the same at the same time so there is one for spain out here but that's a level 6. To grab that, I would need to fulfill a level 5 contract so you get the next one up when you've fulfilled it. So I'm be thinking about, you know, I, I probably want some livestock and some muskets. You know, if we're looking at all of these contracts here, Spain wants a weapon. So a weapon is anything with that weapon symbol on it. It can be muskets, copper, saltpeter, or iron. So it can be muskets. This contract wants livestock and muskets. This one wants livestock, Bohemia wants muskets, copper and iron. So how do we get goods in this game? Well, we have our little bonus supply board here. We basically have a cube of each colour at the start of the game. We can use those for contracts if we need to. It's never refilling. You might as well use them, but just bear in mind that you might be in a pinch. If you've used it frivolously, then uh, you might regret that. We can get them from going to England, to wine, Italy, to coal. But then, the main map here, this is how we get those cubes. So, we're not going to do any investing. I'm not going to get rid of the contract right now, I don't believe. Unless I'm going to go somewhere and I really want a bonus. But I don't think I'm going to do that. You can see that all of the major locations, the, 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 the coloured locations basically, have a cube on them to start the game off with. Each cube can be one of two things. And there's a there's a... Bit of a rule as to what you can take when you take a good, but just for now, know that it's, the cubes can be two different things. So I could get livestock or muskets by coming to Hamburg, but I want both of them. So ways of getting more cubes out onto this map. You see these ropes here that link the locations. If I was to go to Sweden, let's say, right now, I would get myself that black cube. I could fulfill anything that I like in Sweden. I would also gain a time as well. And see, some locations give you time. Some locations need you to spend time because they're further away. So I can't go to the locations that cost time until I've earned some somewhere. So that's another thing that factors into it. So I would get a black cube, do whatever I can do in Sweden. But then, you see all these links here, a cube would appear in Russia, Danzig, and Hamburg. And that's how you get more and more cubes out. But if I want to fulfill this contract in Bohemia, I want copper and iron, so I want two cubes to be in Sweden. Right now, if I'm thinking about that... So what would be good to start me off with? Going to somewhere like England would be nice to earn things. There are also these faraway locations here that um, they will cost time or earn time you don't get any goods from going there you'll get bonuses if you have bonus cards you can fulfill contracts if you have contracts for those places but they only add cubes to the board based on so newfoundland newfoundland uh, will get you a cube everywhere but other locations italy will only fill up locations where there's already a cube or more uh, denmark it's two or more bohemia three or more cubes to go there so there's other ways of getting more cubes out there but you need to start with something so Spain just wants a weapon, right? So weapon is either black for copper or iron, green for muskets, or yellow for saltpeter. So what if I came on my first turn here, so travel, time management, take goods, and refill everything. 
So what if on my turn, and you can go to the same location, this marker here is just basically to remind you, and in the multiplayer game, to remind everyone else where you've just been so they can follow as well. Uh, it's not like you have to go somewhere else or anything like that. I think I might go to Danzig. So if I'm thinking about that, I could be looking at, say, the shop up here. That isn't the shop button. That one is. I could think, you know, if I want to get rid of something that costs me four, I could get two copper for coming to Danzig. So there's always like that little pull that I'm about to go there. I've only got 17 turns if I want to do this. Maybe I do want to sell something to get that bonus so I can start earning all of these extra cubes. But I like the fact that I've got these two Spain ones, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay, so travel. Before we do travel, we need to go to the solo deck here in the contracts. And you see that there are contracts up to level... Well, level 10 consecutively, and then level there's a level 14. There's one level 14 contract piece of Westphalia. So the only way to get that is to complete a contract of level 10. So if we want to go that for, for that for points, we have to you know, progress up in these contracts. So we reveal a new one. That's our timer for the game. And then we travel. So I'm traveling to Danzig. I get this cube. If there's only one cube there, it can be whichever one you like. It's... Um, in the future, when we're collecting multiple cubes at the same time, your restriction is you've got to have goods of both kinds. You can split them however you like, but you've got to make sure that you have you know, at least one of each, and then you can decide what goes on with that. So I can either have this as grain. Grain's nice for later. You know, this contract in Spain wants grain, but um, saltpeter is something that's needed pretty soon. So I think I'm going to take it as saltpeter. Because then, when we fill up the map now, so for uh, so I've taken the goods, time management I need a time for, so I'll grab myself a time token. And then, all of these connected locations, so Danzig does not get any more cubes, it's empty. But Hamburg, where I do want things from, and Sweden, where I also want things from, and Russia, who make uh, ham and fish oil, don't need that yet, but might need it in the future. They all produce a cube and then come back to my player board. So then fulfill contracts. If I had any for Danzig, I could fulfill them now, get new contracts. Four for one trades means you can spend four goods of the same type for anything else. And you can also spend four time as a good as well. Uh, get new contracts if you fulfilled those contracts. I didn't. And then all of this stuff accompanying and everything. Don't worry about that in solo. It's just it's just us against the world. So that is that's one of my that's a seventeenth of the game gone. I know I've waffled on for quite a while talking about all of it, but it'll speed up now, price. Okay, so I've got my weapon now. Saltpeter is a weapon type thing. So I could just go to Spain, spend the time I've earned, and fulfil that, and then get a level four contract, and we start uh, we start cooking. But I don't think I've drawn great bonuses for my contracts yet. They might pay off later on. But I think turn two, now there's two cubes in there. I could go to Hamburg, get a livestock, a muskets, two more time, and then I would be able to do both of these contracts when I go to Spain and get two new contracts, which then I can start to spend for some money, perhaps. I think that would be a good move. So I need to reveal a new level eight contract. Bohemia wants six different food. We're nowhere near level eight contracts, though, so don't have to worry about it too much just yet. I'm going to come over to Hamburg here, grab myself two time. So I've got three all together. And yeah, I, I grab these. So I'm having one as each because I have to. If there's two, you have to do both of these things. Uh, and then Danzig fills up, as does Sweden as does the Dutch Republic. And I think, yeah, there's no connection to France there. So yeah, again, haven't earned any bonus cubes, haven't fulfilled any contracts yet, but now we're ready to do two in one go, which I think is okay. Okay, so another turn. Do I want to buy anything now? I should, I'll probably wait, because there's no things for, for Spain out there. 
bonus cards, they aren't going to change. Nobody's going to take them away from me. The extra thing for Solo is if you buy a building, all of the bonus cards clear and you get four new ones out there. So it refreshes the display somewhat. I think I might just deliver. I know weapons for a Care Bear, they're, they're water pistols. Don't worry about that. If, if it's okay, if, it, if it's a weapon that Sooty could use, then uh, that'll be okay. Maybe an, a bit of an insular UK reference there. But that's all I'm full of. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to sell anything still. I'm wondering whether I should, I should have done that Danzig thing for copper, but we can worry about that later. But it reminds you of Gates of Loyang where you're juggling a ton of resources. Yeah. Well, Gates, Gates of Loyang is another one that would be great to do solo because of its unique, like, uh, card table system for, for solo. Because it's got, it's got a really nice card system for the multiplayer game, but a, a lovely, unique one for solo as well. But it is, uh, it's very much about the pressure being put on you as well. And uh, time is against you because it needs to be. Uh, you know, the, the, the length of the game is decided by the players somewhat in normal Makata. We have, uh, move that out of the way. I'll find it because you don't need it at all for solo. We have a time board in the multiplayer game. You can also play a long game for three or four players, which, or actually, there is a long game for two players as well that is just on this side. Uh, so when people earn time, it comes from this board instead of just a basket where I'm taking it from. And then the, a bit of a weird thing about Makata, uh, when things get taken from the end of this row, you flip it over and the time tokens have all got letters on them uh, corresponding to these columns in your goods. And things spoil. Uh, it tells you, you know, you need to lose something from that particular column in there. But it also says in the rules, in the variants, uh, you can choose not to play with that. And note from the designer, I really recommend you don't play with that rule. It's a bit of a weird thing for, uh, for, for that to be in the game. And then for the, for the designer to be quite uh, emphatic about, don't play it like that though, please. Yes, it is. It is a lovely, tricky game, and it's like it's you're still juggling resources and doing kind of Uwe Rosenberg things. But I feel it like, for better or for worse, this is quite different to any other of his games. Uh, I think when we were talking about this, I can't remember if it was in one of the streams uh, with uh, Paul Grogan, long time gamer, much uh, longer than I've been around. He said this was uh, this was quite a disappointment to the the hardcore. Uveas back in 2011 or whenever this came out. But I love it. Massive shame it's out of print. It's been out of print as well the whole time I have uh, I have known about it. I had, I just chanced on a copy on the Board Game Geek Market at some point years ago. And uh, yeah, I, I, as far as I know, it's never come back in print. Hopefully it will. Yeah, maybe we'll do a, a Gates Live playthrough. There will be a proper, I mentioned this in the coming up video, I think I'm going to do another vote on the Patreon for the, there's the main one for playthroughs, I think I'm going to do one for these live playthroughs as well, since there's a, not strictly, but the recorded one's going to try and do more two-player things, because live ones are going to be solo, because, not that they have to be, but I think it's a bit easier if they're just solo ones, rather than me just sitting here and me and Mo Glass Marty ignoring you all. But yeah, Gates is a is a good option, and uh, I've I've got a hankering for Feast for Odin. I, I was thinking it's oh, I didn't do a playthrough that long ago. It's probably quite a while ago when I did that playthrough. Now time has just merged into one big muddle for me, though, so I don't remember how long things are. Okay, we're going to Spain. I need to spend a time to go there, which is fine. Uh, start the trial phase. Reveal a card. Remind me on that, because I will forget. Uh, so I need to decide, do I want citrus, fruit, or spice? I don't care. Uh, Italy wants food. I'm not going to get a three contract, though. Uh, Russia wants citrus, fruit. Let, let's say you're citrus, fruit. Either way, it's a food, if we get the seven contract at some point. Uh, so, yes, we've done time management, taken the goods. Uh, bear with me there. I will be right back. I need.
hello, as usual, wasn't something that uh, I was actually needed for. Cold caller, unfortunately. I thought it was an exciting game parcel that I could show you. I do have one of those to show you, though. Peace for Odin was March 2020. <sighs> Over a year ago. Yeah, Paul, Paul's doing a load of Feast for Odin, isn't he, lately? That's what I saw with it last week he was doing Feast for Odin. That's what made me think. I'd really like to do a solo one of that, because it's, it's fairly snappy as well as a solo game, once you've got it all set up. A breath now. Okay, fulfill contracts. We can finally fulfill some contracts. Yes, that's the right button. So I've got a weapon, saltpeter. Livestock and muskets from Spain. And yes, so I don't need to do any 441s or anything like that or get anything off my supply board. It's still just uh, pristine and brand new. But I do get a level 4 contract, a level 5 contract. Now there is another little variant in this that's for expert Mercators where you can have a card in your hand. Only one card. And it can be, you know, a fresh one that's come out. It is allowed that you take a card in your hand because it's something you don't want because you want to get to something that's underneath and have a different choice instead. You can't discard the card in your hand. You're stuck with it once you've got it. But, um, yeah, that is a variant that you can play with as well. Otherwise, you just draw the top thing from the decks. So I've got Italy want any three weapons. Dutch Republic want fabric and fish oil. So, we need to not forget to fill these up. Only two places get cubes for going to Spain. Yeah, Solo is fantastic in Feast for Odin. Even though it is beating your own score, uh, yeah, the way that you your meeples get in the way of your previous round's meeples is just a brilliant way of doing it, that you've just got two sets of workers and you can't do the same action consecutively. Brilliant solo mode. So it comes to the start of a new round, and I have six contracts. That's not allowed. So I've got to think about something to buy and what I want to get rid of as well. You know, looking up things further up, let's see, the, in the shop, the buildings are fairly pricey. We're not going to be spending 20 right now. That would be pretty much every contract. But you can get big points for some of these things. Uh, the warehouse, five points if you've got at least 20 cubes. That's likely, especially if we start getting some bonuses in. Uh, the the field tower? Peel tower. Uh, for at least seven weapons, you get five points. But I might lean towards getting some bonuses instead. Especially if I've got a contract I need to fulfill in Italy right now. I've already got a bonus for going to Italy. I could get the other one. But I would need to spend three money to do that. There's nothing for Sweden because I do want to go to Sweden to get copper and iron for Bohemia. Italy just want weapons. Which I could get for going to Sweden. So I maybe want to go to da get the bonus from Danzig because copper is two weapons right now. It doesn't have to be three different weapons. And if I wanted to fulfill that Italy contract, oh, I could do that, couldn't I? Because any three weapons, copper would be two of those weapons and saltpeter, that's the cube in there, would be the third weapon. And then I could go to Italy. Hmm... Do I abandon my double Spain combo here so early? Because it's four for this one, but then if I'm going to Italy, I'd like to just be loading up on the bonuses. I'm just, I'm just going to sell this for Dutch Republic contract, I think, for now, so I can get this Danzig bonus card. So a new one will come out. Spain, two plums for going to Spain. We don't get that just yet. Well, you have to buy it to try and get it. I'm happy with that. So traveling, are we going to go to Danzig then? I think so. So new level 8 card. And I'm going to 
pop back over to here, get another salt Peter because it's a weapon. I have a bonus, two copper for coming here, so that just comes from the supply, and you know, it, unlike getting it from the locations, it's dictated to you which item it is. Uh, so I get two copper, and then things refill. Russia and Hamburg and Sweden now has four cubes on it. So I could get two of each for Bohemia there, and then come back to Hamburg and get two muskets, and I could go there twice at some point. Ooh, that's something to think about. Uh, Pre-COVID, Feast for Odin and Terraforming Mars are pretty much the only games we enjoy solo, and there are a few more now. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of us have been getting more back into uh, solo gaming with all of this going on. But uh, the time they came out, Feast for Odin and The Gallerist, uh, I played incessantly for, for weeks after they came out. There's, and Feast for Odin, I don't know if they're still doing this, but on Board Game Geek in the forums, they kept doing solo challenges with uh, nice little twists and new rules in them. Uh, really, really fantastic. Thanks, Steve. I need a time for going to Danzig. So that's all of that. I've got some cubes now, so I could just head over to Italy, and then that's three weapons, and I could get a level six contract, which is for Spain as well. I could have three contracts just going to Spain. They're harder to fulfill, and it wants a grain and a saltpeter and an iron, but I've just emptied Danzig. So going to Italy costs two time. Everywhere that has a cube gets another cube. I would get two coal. Absolutely useless to me right now. And yeah, no more than that. I could try and get some more things. Because it would be nice if Danzig had a cube in it, right? If I'm going to Italy, because then it would get a second cube. And I would have a grain and a salt pizza for going to Spain. So first, do I want to go to maybe... Sweden? I would get another time get a load of weapons, and these two contracts would appreciate that, and the Spain one I'm hoping to get. And then Danzig would get a cube in it, so for going to Italy, it would get more in it. So is Sweden the good option? I haven't flipped one this round, I should, before I forget. But I'm still thinking about where I should go. I could just... That's, that's the thing, if just you could always just go to a couple more places first and get a more optimal move, but you know, time is against you. How, what is, uh, this is turn 5 of, uh, of 17. So, if I go to Sweden first, do I want to buy anything? I want to buy that other Italy bonus, but it's for calf skin as well, which isn't going to help me. I'm just going round in circles with this. I think I'm going to go to Sweden first and grab some stuff. So you want iron for Spain, both for this Bohemia contract. I think I'm going to pop three in iron and one in copper, because you've got to do one of each at least, because then I've got an even amount of both. That's just where I'm going. I earn a time for doing that, and then that pops a cube back in Danzig, another one in Russia, and one in Hamburg. So unfortunately there are two empty locations that aren't going to get a cube when I go to Italy, but it'll be okay. I'm not going to buy anything. Aren't I? Is this Bohemia contract worth keeping? Surely it's easier to just do this Italy one. You know what? I'm going to sell this Bohemia contract. It's worth five. As I say it, I'm doubting myself. So I can grab this, Ital this other Italy bonus. And so I've got two left over, which isn't going to buy me anything. But if I give up this Russia one, that probably isn't going to get anything done to it anyway. 
I could get a bonus for Spain, which is where I want to keep going, isn't it? For all of these contracts. I've I've got four spare though if I spend that. And Spain only costs three. So to be the most efficient, I want a bonus for France or get some citrus fruit from France. Kind of useless. Or some livestock from the Dutch Republic. Which is nice. I do need livestock, but the act of going to the Dutch Republic isn't as useful to me. So let's get this Dutch Republic one. So that's all that money spent. So the you have I frozen? Deep in thought there. I assume you can still hear me. Is the picture of me just frozen? Or is that just on my preview? Okay, I'm not sure where he's gone. We'll get him back soon, I hope. Just the small image is frozen. It's strange. As far as I know, nothing's happened. Let me, uh, I'll unplug the camera a sec. Just ghosts in the machine. It just needed unplugging and plugging back in again. Oh dear, I've forgotten everything I was doing now. I just bought a building, didn't I? So yeah, the, the contract thing, I, I did check on the forums, even though a lot of the posts are from 10 years ago. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, the solo works that you can get kind of, you can temporarily get change. So I spent a uh, five contract on a three card. You do still get the change temporarily. You can think of it as if you do sell them for coins, but those coins don't last after this phase. So you, you can, if a card comes out now that you want to buy, you can put more money towards it and just buy the card that comes out. So what was all this in aid of? This was in aid of going to Italy, wasn't it? Card from the deck. Italy want three weapons. And I've got loads now. So Spain aren't fussy about their weapon. They do want a grain and a salt, Peter, though. And an iron. So maybe I should spend a copper, especially now I've got rid of that Bohemia thing. Yes, try turning that off and on again. It's, uh... It just works, doesn't it? So yeah. Oh, I need to spend three weapons, though. So I think I might just spend the copper. I don't specifically need copper for anything. It doesn't have to be three different weapons. I'm just going to spend the copper. I need to spend two time to go there, and Italy fills up everywhere that's already got a cube on it. Check I've got the camera on the right view. So that's everywhere but Sweden and Spain. Checking back now to check I haven't frozen again. Uh, and then, it's just getting the camera, it's just getting the microphone in now, isn't it, as well? Uh, maybe it always was. And so if we're going to Italy as well, I get two coal and two calf skin, which is quite nice. No, no um, particular use for them just yet, but cubes are always a nice thing to have, especially when it comes to getting the buildings. Uh, calf skin and coal. And that's that, isn't it? Oh, so for fulfilling the Italy contract, that's a five. So I get myself a six, which happens to be Yet another Spain contract, which, so if I go to Danzig, I can get the grain and saltpeter. I already have the iron. If I go to Hamburg, I can get the livestock and markets. And I have a weapon some, from somewhere. But that's a lot of turns away. I mean, I could go back to Italy. I've got the time. I've still got three weapons, but that would be spending an iron that I do need. It would be. It would put more cubes out and stuff. Uh, 
And yeah, time is ticking away. So do I want to buy anything? If I'm going to... So where would that be? Hamburg and Danzig get me the cubes that I need. There are no things for those out yet. The only thing I would sell as well is the Italy one maybe, because I like my Spain trio. So I don't think I'm going to spend anything. Let's just travel again. So I want livestock and muskets. I can get more livestock in the Dutch Republic, so why not? And let's look at the contracts that we would gain as well. We would gain 457. So that would be Danzig, England, and Newfoundland. Is that how I'm supposed to say it? I can't remember. Um, four different food. That's got to be doable. So where do I want to go first? I haven't got a bonus card for grain and saltpeter and stuff. So I think I'm going to hop off to Hamburg first. So another level 8 comes out. Another one to England. Livestock and muskets. Now I've got the bonus card for livestock, so I think I'll put two in muskets and one in livestock, not spice. That gets me two time, so I, I do have four time now. Help me to go places, but also can be an extra good if I need one. So I could, in theory, just go there now. I could. And use this as the grain. Ooh, maybe I don't need to wait. So cube there, cube in Sweden, cube in the Dutch Republic. And haven't filled any contracts or anything. No bonuses for going to Hamburg. I do get the bonuses for going to Danzig though, don't I? It's just... I could, I could go straight back to Spain now. I wouldn't gain any goods is... is one downside of that. I would have to spend a good there, but weapon could be iron. Livestock muskets, fine. Saltpeter, grain can come from my supply board. Iron. Any three weapons. Iron, iron muskets. And then maybe we don't do this combo again. We do something with some other stuff. Yeah. We haven't got time to waste. I'm going to spend a time. I need to reveal a card. We're into the level 9 cards now. So. I don't gain any goods. Refill. France gets one. I've got no bonus for Spain. I could have had the bonus for plums. I wanted to give up the Italy one, but that would give me two spare money. I think that would be a waste. Especially, yeah, maybe we'll do the Italy one again. I've got all those bonuses. Yeah, stick with your move. I'm going to go for England. Yes, and then fulfilling these contracts. So, livestock and muskets, they have to be that. Saltpeter... Grain and iron. And then any weapon. Could just be iron again. Yeah. Okay, so I fulfilled three, four, six. So I get four, five, seven. So we're up to a level seven contract, which I want to do the most, to be honest now see can we get to the level 14 contract i kind of doubt it but <laughs> let's give it a go and i've bought no buildings yet maybe but i've got two con i have to sell at least two contracts so hopefully earn some money from that so all of that sorted let's look at my board then so i want to keep this one because it's my highest level and it's how i'm going to get on to level eight and so on level eight is in england and that's not going to change anymore, so maybe I want to keep that. There is a bonus in France for getting citrus fruit, which I want for England. Danzig gets me a bonus, and I'm always going there for yellows anyway. But is this the time to give up on the Spain trio? And try and do bigger and better things? 
if I'm going to Newfoundland with for four different food, I could get some muskets by getting a bonus from there. I don't think I'm going to keep the Danzig one. That's four money. Do I want to buy... I could just sell all of the Spains, but that is a... It takes some getting together, doesn't it? In a way. But... It seems like a really nice engine for things. I get rid of the Italy one, and then I'm down to five. I would have nine money, which I could just buy one of the eight buildings with, have 20 cubes or have seven guns. Or I could get myself a couple more bonus things, but they're worth no points at the end of the game. And how are we for food? I've got a food. Dutch Republic is good for food, though. It's quite decent for that. And um, Russia can get your ham. I'm going to go for a bonus card. Have at least seven weapons. So a new building comes out. We zoom in on the shop. Uh, this was a, a misprint on the original card. Uh, it's uh, a point per cube type in storage. A point per cube left in your storage at the end of the game was incredibly overpowered, so they had to <laughs> alter that. So the, the bonuses changed now, so I wonder now should I have bought some bonuses from where I was. But I could now get some iron for going to Newfoundland. I would need to give up... I need two more money though, I've got one change from buying the building. I could give up my Spain, your livestock and muskets. And I could buy that and another three. Oh, I should have bought the other Newfoundland one now. Or I could give up the England one. Which I'm not really geared up to do at all. And I could get the Newfoundland one since I'm going there. And hope this is a nice three. Bohemia. It's cheap to go there, but only places with three or more cubes get another cube for going there. Now get me some fish oil, which isn't really useful. Let's say... Get some grain from Denmark. At least grain might be vaguely useful to me. Okay. So that's money spent that I'm questioning if I should have spent it. Let's see then. So I want to either get the Spain combo going again, but I probably want more to do the Newfoundland combo instead to get to a better contract. So if we're getting new food, if I went to the Dutch Republic, I can get vegetables and two livestock. So I think that's the move. It has to be for different food though. So is this just frozen again? I'm still here. Just uh, wondering, is it is it something else that's plugged into my computer that's making this happen? Don't freeze on me again. Yeah, just how many turns, though, is it going to take for me to gear up this Newfoundland contract when I could have geared up on this and got three new contracts and bought another building? But those places also won't restock if I just keep going to them. And France which I got rid of the bonus card for, makes two types of food. Plums and wine are both in the food category. Let's go to the Dutch Republic. So card from the deck for that. 
So I get vegetables and calf skin. I've already got some calf skin and I want food. So I'm going to take it mainly as vegetables. I get a time for going there. I get two livestock for going there, which is also a type of food. So I've got right now three types of food, but I could just do it, couldn't I? Because I can use one of these. Yeah. Okay. And then fill up. Hamburg gets one. France gets one. And jolly old Ingloid. Okay. Well, I feel a bit better about that. So next turn. Turn over a card. Newfoundland, six identical food. Well, that's maybe more doable. It costs me three times to get all the way over there, though it's miles away. It does give everywhere a cube. So let's do this in some vague order. Do all the ones on this board, and then all the ones on this board. And then, everywhere gets a cube, and I can do one, two, three. I could say spice as the fourth different food from my supply board, which is still pretty well stocked, I think. Um, so yeah, that's done, that's done, that's done. It's a level seven contract, so I get myself a level eight, which is England want three plums. A lot of plums in France right now. Two spice, not too far away from that in Spain. It's just got the one thing at the moment. And then vegetables, I've got spare. So I think that's not too bad. Oh, did I not flip one? I'll flip a solo card. Bohemia wants six identical weapons. Their demands. Okay. So now... Am I going to... Oh, it's a hard to find game, a small fortune on eBay unless you get a German coffee. Yeah, the, the, the text is... It's, it's all goods, isn't it? And it just tell you on there which goods they are. And you, you could paste it at worst come to worst. It's, it's one that's probably got... Yeah, it's, it's probably doable. Depends how much you want it, I suppose. I did it with Aura at Labora when it was just impossible to get. But then eventually it got reprinted. I think Aura at Labora was more popular than Makata though. Who knows what people are going to do though. They seem to be... Uh, it seems to be that Z-Man... Who I didn't... Uh, did Z-Man do this? this? This is Lookout Games, so I don't know if Z-Man ever did this. But they seem to have given up the license on Uwe Games. Because I know Glass Road is coming out from Capstone, right? Who've done some great heavy games. Okay, so plan. We can't go there again. I haven't got three time. Do we want to work on England? There's loads of plums up for grabs. There's not so much spice up for grabs. I should have used something else as the extra food cube. I've got the vegetables. There are no bonus cards that get me spice. Do we give up on Spain? What would that be? 13 money. I could get myself an 8 building and potentially a bonus card that would give me some spice. Do you know what? I'm going to go for it. As much as I love my Spain machine, I'm giving up on it potentially too early. I'm going to buy myself the warehouse. So I want, I want 20 cubes over here, and then the bonus cards go away. And what comes out? The only one that hasn't come out yet. Two spice, but I gotta go to Russia to get that. So what did I have? I, I had 13 money, didn't I? And I've spent eight of it. And we need to see a new building also. 20 points, 20 money, but that gets you 12 straight up points. So Russia, ham is food as well for stocking up Newfoundland again. Uh, and then we need some more bonus cards. So I want something. I could get another bonus if I'm going to deliver to Newfoundland again. If I'm going to go to... Oh, Spain, get, Spain can get me plums. Hmm... 
I'm going to take the spice one. I'm not sure if that's a great thing to get. That going to Spain, even when it gets another cube next turn, I can't have them as two spice. I've got to have them as one of each. So if I want the two spice, I can go to Russia and get it as a bonus now. Not right now, but next turn. Okay, solo card flipped. That's all the nines. There are four tens and the 14. So I have five turns after this. Okay, so I agree, Michael. Plums should be the thing. I can take five plums and a wine. I could have a sixth here to do it twice, but what's what level nine would it be? Fabric and fish oil. <gasps> so take from Russia fish oil. Ooh, okay, stock up other things, don't forget that. Grey there, and a red there, and that's it. Okay, no new contracts yet. No time from France. New turn. Let's flip a level 10. So we, you want way too much stuff. Let's go to Russia. I've got no France bonuses, have I? No. I don't think I've leveraged my bonuses very well this game. So in Russia, I'm going to take it mostly as fish oil. I can get myself five fish oil there. Or maybe, yeah, I'll have, I'll have four fish oil and a couple of ham. Maybe I'll want some different food. No time for going there at all, but I do get two spice. Oh, thanks, Scott. Mercator is in gamers' trade piles. Might be able to trade it rather than being able to buy it. So they fill up, they fill up, yes. And then I've got it right. Let's get over to England. And finally, after all these turns, activate England's sorry bonus. And England is where they make fabric for Hamburg. <gasps> Brilliant. Okay, let's have all of this as fabric then. I've already got a coal, so one has to go as coal. Everything else can be fabric. And I get two wine for coming here. I... Nothing, do nothing with time, but then give up three plums, two spice, and a vegetables. And that gets me a level nine contract. So three fabric, three fish oil from Hamburg. I can do that. The level 10 contract isn't worth thinking about because it's about to change. So do I want to sell anything? and get more stuff. Probably not. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to flip a level 10. Any 10 weapons? That's kind of doable. Did I not flip one for going to England? I can't remember, there was a point where I said, I've got five turns left, I can't remember when that was. I'm going to trust you over me, Steve. France wants any 10 weapons, okay. And I haven't topped up the things, have I? Because if I've gone to England, France should definitely have a cube. So I will assume I didn't do any of them. Okay, so now we can go straight to Hamburg. No bonuses for going to Hamburg. I have livestocks and muskets. I have to have one of each. I don't know why I'm even thinking about it. Then you get topped up. You get topped up. And... So do you. Give up three fabric and three fish oil. You can tell I'm not leveraging things well enough because my supply my supply card is usually empty long before now. And then I've done you. So that gives me level ten. Have ten weapons. So right now I have five. I can get four for going to Sweden. I believe I've already filled them up, haven't I? I need two time. I get no other bonus for going to Sweden. Oh, oh. Going to Danzig gets me all this saltpeter, and I only have to have one as grain. And then I can 
oh, but I only want to fulfill that when the 14 is available. I can. So, so what happens is if you fulfill a contract and there's no more of that number left or that number hasn't come out yet, you just get a contract of the same value again. So I could do this France one in one turn's time, which is actually when I need to. Okay, ignore me. Uh, so let's go to Danzig. That gets me a time as well. I've bought no buildings. Ho hopefully the points from <laughs> contract are going to get me through this. And I'm not going to have any guns cubes for this. For my five points from this. But the 14 points for the contract are going to be worth it. Uh, for travelling, I need to flip a card. Going to Danzig. I've had the time, I think. I'll have it as salt peter, and then one has to be grain. And then... Going to Danzig also gets me two copper. Nothing else. And then final turn. Do I want to buy anything? Because this is the last chance. So you only want to buy stuff if... So I don't know if, if I've explained properly about the scoring. So where can what's going to zoom me in the furthest? The contract screen, probably. So you get up to five contracts on your main player board. You get the points for the level of the contract. Any more get you half points. And uh, buildings score their value. Money isn't in this, but bonus cards aren't worth anything either. So yeah, usually I'm overflowing with contracts, but I haven't really... Um, I haven't really been doubling up on them as much as I feel that I normally would. Thanks, Steve. We need to top up these places. But we've only got one place that we can really go. So I, I don't think there is a way of spending money to make money. Because in the shop, cheapest building is 14 money. And I don't think they're going to get me 14 points. So a point per type of good in storage. If you look at my player board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I would lose points nine. Oh no, they're not in storage, they're in depots. So yeah, I don't think a building is gonna be worth it. I'm just gonna have to try and sail through on. Will I have 20 cubes? I think I will. Let's go. So France. I can get more cubes by you know pulling these in and four to one time tokens and all of that. So plums or wine? I don't think I'm bothered, am I? <laughs> Say wine. And then I need to give up any 10 weapons. So let's say muskets, copper and iron. What else can be weapons? Things that I've used already. Okay. So that's two. It doesn't matter which weapons, does it? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, they're spent. Hi, Gemway. Oh yeah, you can always watch back afterwards, but you've joined me right at the end, so you can you can spoil the end for yourself. I just got parts of Beam Trade of the Bonanza Board. I remember seeing that in the works loads, and never grabbing it when I had uh, when I had a chance to. I've never played. I've I've had it pointed out to me in the comments that uh, Bonanza is apparently great. I never played it, because I, I heard early on that it was no good for two players, it being a trading negotiation kind of game, I think. I've never played it, or even really looked into it. But maybe when lockdown lifts, maybe that's an Uwe hole that I need to fill. Especially if uh, if the Beam Trader board game version has got a bit of this in it. Hi, Victory BHG. You join us for the last turn of the game. I've spent ten things then. Which means, yeah, I'm only going to have five weapons, unfortunately, for that thing. I'll definitely have 20 cubes, though. So I've done that, which means... Oh, the card I should have revealed. <gasps> Peace of Westphalia is mine. So that is 14 points in that um, turn. Did I grab coal as if it was a gun? I did. How many coal did I have? Was it just one? Not that it matters anyway. I think, I think I've got at least 20 cubes. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty-one, two, three. As long as there wasn't like six coal or something, I think we're okay. 
Let me know, though, if I spent more than one coal. I can't remember how many I had. Maybe I had two. Because of Italy. Just one. Okay. Whisk away, then. I've spent Saul Peter instead. So, yes, piece of Westphalia is worth 14 points. That is it. Do I get any bonuses from going to France? No. The... Yeah, the, the things fill up. It doesn't matter, though, does it? It doesn't really matter. So, final... <gasps> Dennis, you are too late! It... Don't look! We don't want to be spoiled on the score. So, up to five contracts placed in the office score their full points. So I'm on 14, 24, 33, 41, 48. I'm not, I've not even scored what I did last night. And then... Do I have seven weapons? I've just got four. No. Do I have at least 20 cubes? Yes, I do have that. What was I on? 14, 23, 31, 38. I've got 20 cubes. So 43? Is that my score? I think it was like 66 last night. But I, I was doubling up on contracts a lot more. I was being a lot more efficient. I promise, I promise I'm not this bad always. Uh, let how things go. Oh dear. 55 points is for beginners. So I got more experience last night, but... I think, yeah, dumping... Dumping these... Dumping the Spain contracts. Maybe I should have just kept doing the Spain contracts a bit more. I just felt like the time it was taking to get the stuff for them, it wasn't really worth it. You kind of want, though... Maybe double up on a couple of contracts, but have a contract where you need to go to get the stuff to fulfill the other contract. It's nice. I know, like, it's... it's Look at the draw in some sense of that, and maybe it'd be better playing with the card in your hand uh, to prepare yourself to get something ready, to get rid of a card that's no absolutely no good for you. It is a little bit better if, you know, de depending on the... Uh, the bonus cards that you get can make a bit of a difference as well if they kind of gel with where you're going to be going to get these goods. But largely, it is down to yourself and your potential inefficiencies with your 17 actions. That's all you've really got in this. And since, you know, it takes a few actions to fulfill some of these things. And as I've said a few times as well, I definitely did not leverage this uh, supply tile enough early on. You know, I could have just gone to, what was it, Russia, turn one? grabbed a, whatever good it was, a livestock, there it is, just grabbed a livestock off this, just fulfilled that contract, got the cube off there, and gone from there. Maybe that would have been a better start rather than starting with the, the bigger contracts. But hey, you live and learn, don't you? You sometimes play badly in front of people watching you doing it live. But hey, it's all about, it's all about the fun of gaming, isn't it? So there we go. A, a fairly fast stream. I think with uh, with starting soon and waffle and um, card and uh, cameras turning off and stuff, still that's about an hour at the most, which for me is quite a speedy stream. I didn't say at any point during it that like everything that I do, it's funded by Patreon, patreon.com forward slash slicker trips. If you'd like to help me keep making things, thank you to everyone that signed up. April was a really uh, fantastic month for for doing all of this stuff and it was the anniversary and stuff but yeah thank you everyone that's joined me up on the patreon as well because it's the reason that i'm here able to do all of this always surprises me when i make these gestures and suddenly my hands are on the screen with the table cam uh is that bonanza six people around a table arguing about beans so the the bonanza board game doesn't have negotiations but you can tag along on a trip to the next town like Mercator. It is a, that is a really good bit in the multiplayer Mercator as well. You can see, um, it, it was probably three or four years ago now, but if you just search on my channel for it, there is a playthrough of multiplayer Mercator as well, if you'd like to see that tag along element to it as well, which isn't in the solo, but I think it it's made up for by the pressure, the time pressure that is put on you. So yeah, there's, there's no time to get stuff done in this. I wish it would come back in print. I think, sh surely, it's it's an Uwe Rosenberg game. Apart from, apart from Hengist, surely most Uwe Rosenberg games deserve to come back in print. So yes, th thank you for joining me at the very end. I, I really hope it does get a reprint. There are 98 people trading it on Board Game Geek, though. So yeah, 
have a have a look who's there anyone uh, anyone near you country wise and yeah see if you can work out some kind of trade for it if uh, if people are still about and trading it thank you for joining me everyone i will be back tomorrow a little bit earlier at three o'clock my time bst uh, for the next chapter in cloud spy we started a couple of weeks ago where paul was finally hammering how to play the game into my head i think it's clicked now and same as i've been doing with mage knight i want to try and keep that clicked by repeat play of the game and i like the idea as well with these so with these um live videos i've spent you know five years as much as i love it racing through to the next game cover the next thing the next thing and then when an expansion comes out i'm all like oh, fantastic i get to go back and do that game again uh, whereas now i'm doing more things with all of the live playthroughs i feel like it's nice to you know this is a bit different because i didn't do a solo one before but it's nice to be able to just go back to things sometimes and have as well as loads of new games coming up and requests like this if you want to request something let me know on all the places that i am at i will probably do it if i uh, if i have the game uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to have some kind of ongoing things going as well. So Mage Knight will keep popping up with more stuff going on in it. We can add expansions and stuff eventually. Uh, Cloud Spire has got a ridiculous amount of stuff in it. Chapters and stuff uh, that hopefully we'll get through as long as I don't just do terribly and uh, lose games. But hey, I've, I've never done terribly at a game, right? I haven't just done uh, really badly at a game. Didn't even get a beginner score. But yes, I hope you'll join me for that if you are around. I am doing... What am I doing on Friday? Venice. Venice. The game from uh, David Torzi and Andre Novak. The new one, Florence, part of a trilogy, is on Kickstarter right now. This isn't anything to do with that. I just got sent a copy of Venice, and I'm going to play it and probably get demolished at one of David's uh, fearsome uh, automas. Yeah, it, it didn't really... Um, yeah, for, for some reason, Paul Paul was saying, I think on one of our streams, that just at the time, Makata just just fell flat when it released to, to a lot of Uwe fans uh, were disappointed in it. I'm not sure why. Uh, it, it is kind of different. I, I'm, I, I'm not really sure why. I don't think he said. Uh, but yeah, I think it's fantastic. A nice, uh, a nice swerve from Uwe's usual uh, farming games, which I'm a big uh, fan of, and worker placement things. Not that he always does that. He's designed tons of games, as I said in the top 10. He's done loads and loads of things. He's done a lot of, at this point, uh, polyomino-based games. Uh, probably getting towards maybe as many of those kind of games as uh, as the big farmy Euros. But uh, yeah, he's very prolific and very variable. Getting Cloud Spire pretty soon. I hope that... Somehow we might uh, teach you. Yeah, the the cover, the cover is very uh, Euro game, and and not in the kind of Clemens Franz um, way. It is, you know, it, it's lovely art, but yeah, it, it's it's definitely one where, <laughs> like a lot of these games, even even um, Russian railroads, I have brought to friends to to play, and they've kind of looked at it like this looks really boring. And, and chosen something else whereas like oh, no, please look past it it's, it's it's really really good yeah but it's i suppose looking at it on the table doesn't maybe inspire the kind of excitement that a load of little um animeeples might but hey if you if you, if you can just visualize in your mind that all this is grain and uh, saltpeter or whatever uh you're in for a treat thank you very much for joining me I'll be back for those days for things. There'll be Taverns of Tiefenthal will be going up. There'll be some kind of Patreon thing <laughs> hopefully coming up, some kind of early playthrough, which I'm sure there will be uh, There will be time to film. Time uh, just slips away. But hey, th this time before 3pm tomorrow, right? I'm sure I can get something filmed in between the kickstarter things that need filming. Lots to do, but lots of fun games to play and uh, joy to be had. Thank you very much for joining me for this, though. I haven't... I haven't given you a look at uh, Marty Cam, and he's actually kind of facing the camera this time for once. I need him just always in the corner, don't I? Where is... Uh, how do I control his camera to get him on a bit more? There he is. For once, not turning away and hiding from the Marty Cam. I don't think I flipped to him the whole time. Usually he's not here at the start of streams, and then... 
at some point when I don't notice. He turns up and faces away from the camera, tries to curl up so he can't really be seen. There you go. He's, he's got his little little paws hiding in the dressing gown. Oh. There you go. You can nearly see a bit more kitty tummy. But he is he's quite masterfully hidden all that with the dressing gown somehow by having his uh, paws tucked into it. This camera now. You're going to say hello to everyone. There's, uh, there's some Marty to end the stream with anyway. And uh, some Marty sneezes. No, he didn't. Sometimes he'll curl up and turn on his back a little bit. But there we go. There'll be more from Marty tomorrow as well. Laughing at me as my, uh, as my Cloud Spire faction <laughs> probably face their inevitable doom. But hey, hopefully not. Hopefully we're going to scream through it all. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow. Hope you can join me. You can watch it all back though if you can't. Marty's moving about now, taking <laughs> taking all the attention off. Oh, he'll have a little have a little clean. Thank you for being here, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye everyone. Say bye, Marty. <laughs>